<laughs> I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my life living in Nicaragua. I had a number of people just in the last week or so ask me a bunch of things about how they can bring different goods into the country. And in some cases, they're big things like trailers and entire metal shops. And in other cases, it's like a nice blender for their kitchen. And there's some basic information that I think people need that will help you kind of visualize why we recommend certain things. And instead of giving specific examples for each individual person, I think showing my experience in trying to bring in just a few items myself will make a lot of it a lot more clear. So let's just hit that bump and we'll get right on to my story of three days of absolute heck trying to deal with the aduana right after that bump. All right, I moved to Nicaragua full time, brought in a bunch of stuff with me, bags and bags and bags of things because we were planning on never leaving three and a half years ago when I did this. This was not my first time to Nicaragua. It was, I'd been here several times. We'd had offices here. I was very familiar with the country, spoke a little bit of Spanish, enough to deal with government offices and such uh, who, you know, you already know what the engagement's going to be, right? If you're dealing with random people, it's much more difficult. If you're dealing with an office where you know you're like paying a bill or, you know, trying to get something renewed, it's much more clear. You know what they're likely asking for so it makes conversations easier in a foreign language if you know a little bit of it anyway so before we get started i want to say so in english we refer to a department that handles the importation of goods when you're coming in as customs in spanish we call that aduana so the department is aduana when i say that you can hear customs but you want this in your lexicon that you're going to be saying aduana if you're going to be doing anything in nicaragua that involves it so that's what we have to deal with okay so we came in me and my family by airplane at Managua. And when you come in at the airport, you bring all your bags and you go through first border control. They're here for security. And then you go through a duana. They're the ones who check to make sure you're not bringing in anything illegal. Or if you're bringing in something that is uh, not appropriate as a tourist that you then have to pay import fees on it, for example. In some cases, this is very straightforward. In some cases, it is not. But in general, the only thing you need to know is if you're bringing in something that legitimately you're using as a tourist, then you're not gonna have any problems. If you're bringing in something that you are not legitimately using as a tourist, and the easy way to think of this is, in any other situation, would you throw this stuff in your bag and take it to Cancun with you for a weekend trip? If yes, you're probably okay. If no, then you're probably importing something. People like to make these arguments, but I've never had someone try to argue for something where it wasn't ridiculously clear which way it was, right? You're, oh, I have one laptop and I have you know, a uh, 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 Nintendo Switch, and I have my phone. Are these things imports? No, of course not. You're going to travel with some video games, some way to do a little bit of work, a way to call people. All those are normal things that every traveler, nearly every traveler does. It's extremely rare to run into someone who doesn't have those things. So that's just normal, right? You, if, if those things surprise you, you're going to have a lot of surprises. But then people say, well, I, I want to bring in, you know, uh, a part for my car that I keep in Nicaragua, or a piece for my house, or something to install in my house. But that's just a traveler's thing, right? And you're like, do, do tourists in a place that are coming in for the weekend install things in their house? No, of course they don't. You're importing something. And behind the scenes, it's, is something going to come in and go right back out again? Or is it coming in to become a permanent part of the country? And this is basically worldwide. This is not unique to Nicaragua. It's just common sense. If it's coming in to be left behind and it's not consumable, then chances are it's going to be imported. So that's basically what's going on. So the reason that you can use this as a handy guide is so if you're talking about bringing in a Nintendo Switch, that's one of those portable game systems. It's like a Game Boy, but a bit more advanced, but only barely. Uh, you're bringing one of those in. We understand that's a traveler's thing. It's something that kids carry on the bus with them. You move it around, you throw it in your backpack, you're bored for a little while, you play some video games. No problem at all. I've never heard of any country having a problem with that. Certainly not Nicaragua. Same thing with like a Steam Deck. Gonna be no problem at all. You just guarantee that that will not cause you any headaches. But if you're bringing in a big gaming rig like I did, that was the thing that really triggered Aduana to say, uh, you're not really treating this like a traveler. And they were legit, right? It was a big bulky game system that took an entire suitcase just for that. And they made me uh, pull that aside and it got flagged for customs or duties. So that made sense. I was hoping they wouldn't flag it, of course, but it doesn't change the fact that it was meant to be left behind. We've been here for three and a half years. It's certainly never going to leave the country. They were completely right to flag it. No problem whatsoever. I was just hopeful that they wouldn't. <laughs> so <clears throat> with that, that and a couple other items, all of them 
being household permanent items. They're mostly networking gear that we wanted to bring in and be able to hook up in our house. And clearly we don't want to fly back to the United States. We want it to stay here and part, be part of our permanent network in our home. So those also got flagged. Would they have gotten flagged if I didn't have the computer or vice versa? I don't know. Sometimes it's that you have multiple items and that makes you more likely to get flagged if you just have one thing, no big deal. Now, I did come in recently with a NAS unit that is a, a much smaller device that's meant for storing videos and, and photos and stuff like that, like it's big storage device with the hard drives. And that, even though it potentially would be left behind, also has the potential to come and go. And because it's used for people who are doing content creation, it leans towards at least reasonable for a tourist to have it. And while they did spend a few minutes looking at it, they deemed it to be a traveler device or something that was covered under what you did not have to pay taxes for. So that, no problem for me. You, maybe you would run into a problem. Like it's, it's, sometimes it's a discussion. It depends who the manager is at the time. That's a tough thing, but the same thing happens anywhere, right? People have to look at the item, figure out what it is, and determine how it falls under the rules. So that's what was going on. But we were okay with that, not with a gaming computer, but my little portable desktop, desktop, not laptop, did not flag as a problem because it was very clear that you could throw that in your bag and simply set up a workstation somewhere for a week or two, get work done, put it back in your bag and go somewhere. That didn't cause a problem. So it wasn't whether it was business or personal. People love to create additional rules, but I'm not aware of any of those things having any rule whatsoever that applies to them. It is whether or not it is something that is going to become a permanent import versus being a tourist item. Of course, how you intend to treat it, they have no way to prove. They only know what these items make sense for. Right. But I've never seen someone actually do these things who intended to take it out. They argue that they could, but they're not arguing that they're planning to, which kind of shows that they agree with the decision. They just unhappy with it. All right. So so that gives you the background. So I was flagged for paying at a duana. These are big items. Now, if you come in during the day, you're more likely to be able to not leave the airport. If you uh, come in at night, as I did, we had to leave the airport because the main aduana offices were closed. So your mileage will vary on this. It'll depend on how busy they are, what time of day you're coming in, what's going on, what items you have. So you, you just take your chances. If you're, so this could be anything, right? You're bringing in that one item that you're like, well, I just want this one thing. And someone was asking me about a blender, for example. Blenders are not something you normally travel with. I would be surprised if very often a duana is going to catch a blender and decide to tax you on it, but they would have absolutely every reason to unless it's specifically some travel blender. So, so just expect that you're at least taking a risk and then gauge what you want to do from there, but you got to understand what the risk is, which is why I'm making this video, so you can make that decision yourself in a wise way. Okay, so this is me coming in. I, all I had is this computer and a couple extra things. The total value of everything I was dealing with was right about $1,000. The computer, brand new, was uh, $650, uh, and then each of the other items was about $100 to $150, and there's about three things. So all together, very close to $1,000 US three and a half years ago, if they were all new. All of them were used and old. At most, the value I was bringing in was between six and $700 uh, because it was used got flagged by aduana. So they took those items, marked them, and shipped them off to the off-site aduana offices. So you can't deal with this at the airport, at least not in my case. That means I had to go home, but my home is here in Leon. So I had to travel from the airport out to Leon because I didn't have a place to stay in the city and was not anticipating any of this, had no idea this was going to happen. I did know that paying taxes was possible or import duties. I was not expecting them to take it and make me come back to pay it. So that caught me by surprise. And I was with my family. So we came out to Leon, got a place to stay, slept for the night. And then in the morning, I had to immediately early in the morning, grab a taxi and head back to Managua two hours one way and during traffic it's really like three hours got there spent hours trying to get into the aduana only to find out that you have to be there at like seven o'clock in the morning get in line and hope you win the lottery to get in the door so i got there wasted a whole bunch of time spent a ton of money on a driver to take me out to bring me back got lunch missed the whole day had to do the same thing the next day but this time we knew a little bit more about what had to happen but it's important to note if i didn't have a driver that knew how to get to a duana it's not labeled anywhere so you've got to have someone who knows what they're doing this is not a thing you generally want to do as a newcomer into nicaragua you want to make sure you have enough connections that you can find a duana and deal with this this is definitely daunting as a first time thing so i recommend not putting yourself in this position under normal circumstances it's hard to describe how much i recommend not letting this happen to you not because it's painful, but because you'll just be sorry one way or another. 
So the second day we ran out, there were nice and early, we were really confident, got there, and we just didn't win the lottery. Spent the whole day waiting, never got let in the door, even though we were there really early. People who got there after us, for whatever reason, were let in. I have no idea how they pick and choose who goes in, but we didn't get chosen. So another day is lost. I should have been staying in Managua, but I didn't have a driver in Managua. I didn't have any resources in Managua at the time. I was new, right? But we had people in Leon because my business partner, Paul, had been here for months. Uh, we had property, we had drivers we worked with. So all this stuff was already set up. So at least I had someone taking me out. And I had an employee in Managua who was able to come and work with me. If I didn't have an employee that was dealing with a bunch of stuff, I'd have been in really tough shape. But he knew where to go, who to talk to, what time. Like he had a lot of information and he would come hang out during the day. But we had to pull someone off of their job to spend the day. And he's an engineer, like he had real things to be doing. So we're losing billable time for him to help me. But at least I had that resource and it was able to, to save me during a really high stress time. Uh, but so I'm paying a taxi driver all day, I'm paying an employee all day, and I'm spending my whole day and still not after two days, have not even gotten to talk to Adwana. This is a ridiculous situation. On the third day, did the same thing again. This time we were prepared to stay just in case. Got there super early, got our name in, waited for hours, finally got let in to go into a duana. So this is the first we're finding out anything. Now you have to go sit in a big waiting room. If any of you have seen Migracion in Managua, it's relatively similar, a little bit smaller and doesn't have the vendors and it doesn't have the outside space and you can't come and go. It's a much more locked down facility because they don't want you grabbing things and running, I suppose. So you have an outside gate you got to get through. That's where your lottery lets you in. They let you in the outside gate. Then you go in. Even once you're in, it's hard to find the building you're supposed to go to. It's very confusing. But you go to this place and you just wait and you basically put in your name and you wait potentially all day for them to call you. In my case, it did take all day. So I waited a good eight hours. And keep in mind, this is a place that is no air conditioning. It's the middle of the day. So it is crazy hot. There's sun beating down on the building. It is, there's no public bathrooms. You're expected to have gone before you got there and hold it. And there's nowhere to buy food or anything. So luckily I had a bottle of water with me. I was getting dehydrated hungry and super thirsty by the end of the day. So if you have problems with low blood sugar, you have problems with hydration, you have problems that you suddenly have to use the bathroom, all those things, you're not going to be able to handle this. So be aware that this could pose a physical challenge depending on your situation. Luckily, I was okay with those things, but like my wife could not have gone that long without access to a bathroom. She'd be like, no way, it's not possible. She also couldn't go that long without access to food. She would have low blood sugar. I can go pretty long without food. It's not a big deal. Of course, if you know everything in advance, you can bring snacks or whatever, but there was not access to anything there and you can't come and go. So this was quite problematic. Even for me, it was, it was quite a rough day, very hot. By the time they called me at like three or four o'clock in the afternoon, it was exhausting. I was just hot and tired. And then I had to deal with everything in Spanish. Remember, 100% Spanish. There's no English resources. Then they take you to another building. They go through all your stuff. You've got officers to go through your stuff. And they determine what it is. They ask you questions. They inspect it. They look it up online. They come up with a, an evaluation. And it, it's this long process. And then they did this thing. They got the information wrong. They refuse to give me my stuff. You're not allowed to leave without it, though. So you you are not blah, I, you would not believe how many people say, you know what, I would just leave it behind. You're not legally allowed to do that, right? You may not be able to leave the country and then face fines that you abandon stuff at a duana. You don't want to end up with. I have no idea what the fines are like, but you could end up with your devices costing ten times what you would have paid had you paid the taxes because you left them in a duana and abandoned your duty. So you're not allowed. To, that's not an option. Unless you, you know, you're just taking your chances. Oh, I may never leave the country and hopefully they never find me. Like, seriously, that's not the way to go. Just don't import something that you're willing to take that amount of risk to leave behind. It doesn't make sense. But that people think that there's all these easy outs that they're going to get. It's customs. You're still part of border control at this point. So you don't want to be playing those games. You want to get in and get out. So I argued with them, but they're like, no, we're, you, this is what it is. We don't care if you're saying these devices aren't what we're labeling them as. Too bad. So it wasn't a huge deal, but they were saying that there were fees for routers and they were calling my switches routers which are not at all the same thing um but what are you going to do like you it's the government right you have to pay the fee and it was not a huge thing but it was like why am i paying 50 dollars for this and 50 dollars for this they're not the thing you're saying that they are so we had to pay that had to go through all the aduana stuff so that was this huge huge effort took three entire days i'm exhausted it did cost many hundreds of dollars. I could have repurchased most of everything new for the price of what we paid to bring it in, but it was just a small selection of our total amount of stuff. So in the grand scheme of things, this was not a big deal 
money-wise. And totally, if you just said ahead of time, this is how much you're going to pay. I may not have brought in all that equipment, but I would have brought the gaming computer. I would have happily paid it. I would have happily had cash and handed it to someone. It's the three days of waiting for it is the thing that I would recommend not have happen to you. If you have nothing going on, none of this bothers you, you have no reason not to sit there for three days or, or whatever, take your risks with it. Who knows how long it could. I got Maybe I got lucky and it was only three days. Maybe I got screwed and it took three whole days. I have no idea, right? Maybe some people get it done in a day. I'm sure they do. Maybe some people take two weeks. That seems plausible given my experience. Uh, so with all this, I spent probably about $600 in taxes for a total of about $700 worth of goods, almost 100%. And then once the aduana process was all done, and they had mentioned this earlier, so I knew it was coming. Then I had to take all of that stuff, not the computer, but all the networking gear, and take it to Telcor, which is the government uh, telecommunications agency, and anything that's like a router, a switch, a Wi-Fi access point, anything like that, has to pay an additional technology tax or fee to come into the country. They're super nice, very easy to deal with, and their fees are not very high, but it's an additional step that takes additional time and additional money. So that was probably, and my memory's fuzzy on this, it was probably around about 60 to to $100 additional for those items to come in. Probably more like 75 to 80 is probably what it was. It's probably three small fees on three small items. Uh, but, but that was an additional step. So you have to do that. And then you have to take all that stuff and you have to get it out to your vehicle once they release you and you got to take it wherever you're going to go. So that is the actual reason. It's not the, the actual fee. That's what people fixate on. They talk about, ooh, $100 fee on these items. Is that worth it? That's not even the thing to discuss, right? Under normal circumstances, the, the amount of stuff you're going to bring in is trivial compared to the amount of cost and effort of your life that is going to go in to do this. So to, to recap, not only did I have to deal with the flight in and hours at the airport dealing with the initial pro problem with Aduana, then I had to pay three different times, um, probably about $150 per day. So $450 total plus any fees, plus an employee that I pulled out of work. So realist and plus my time, three days that I wasn't working, couldn't do anything because I brought in these items. If you put numbers on it, I easily spent thousands of dollars one way or another to go get those items that were only worth about $700. And I was immensely frustrated and exhausted. So that was my start of living in Nicaragua was dealing with that for three days. If you went back and said, Scott, you're going to lose three days of your life all because you want to bring in this used computer and three small networking devices that sure, there'll be a little bit of a pain to replace in Nicaragua, but what, how much of a pain can they be? I just said, you know what? You're completely right. I don't want to do this. If I need these items, all I need to do is ship them in with a shipper, you know, move to the country, learn how things work. It only takes a few days. Find a shipper that someone recommends. Give it a try. Ship your stuff in. You'll probably pay either by the pound or by the device. Yes, they're still going to have some fees. Yes, you're still going to pay some of that stuff, but someone will handle it for you. It'll be shipped in, and in a few weeks, you'll have all that stuff. You won't spend days. You won't have this panic. You won't have this confusion. You won't have to go without using a bathroom. You won't have to go days without food, and you'll just be great. Now my stuff is delivered to my house and I'm good to go, probably for way less money. The routers and switches, I would recommend just not shipping them in. That probably just didn't make sense. The gaming computer is the one thing that did make sense and I would do again, but I would have shipped it in through a third party. I probably would have paid less than $30 to ship it in, most likely, because it's not that heavy. Maybe a little bit more, but even if I paid $150 to ship it in, it would have shaved almost $75 off of the taxes that I paid on it as it was, and not three days, not paying for the driver, not paying for the employee, all that stuff. So I could have made this a really simple process, but the shipping for $150 sounds so onerous, right? In our brains, we're like, $150 to ship a box? That seems like a lot of money. Well, maybe it is, but when you compare it to the alternative, it's really, really cheap and low effort. And when you're here in Nicaragua, you know, think about you could be sitting on the beach or going out drinking, go enjoy a band or just sit in the garden and enjoy for three days and have basically no money go out and have the thing you want show up. Or you could spend this time in a duana dealing with a bunch of overhead and stress and heat and, and be very unhappy. Well, save money life is easier, very rarely do you want to put yourself at risk of bringing things through a duana. You're totally allowed to. You're not in trouble for doing these things unless you're bringing in controlled substances, of course. You're absolutely allowed to do this process, but the government doesn't want you to do this. It's not good for them, even though they're collecting all this money. It 
so expensive for them to do this process that that's why they have to charge that money. It's not something they want you to do. They're trying to encourage you not to do it, and they're not going to make it super simple for you to do because they don't want you doing it. They want you to go through a shipper who has a deal that they can wait at the port and do it at their leisure, and just everything's nice and easy for everybody, so they make that cheap and this expensive. And you're dealing with shipping things internationally. You're talking about actually importing items. So they want, if possible, to go through an official importer who is checking the stuff, and it just... It's the way to do it. It's the same way you would do it in the United States. It's the same way you do it anywhere in the world. If you start thinking about it in that context, we often try to treat Nicaragua as a special case. Oh, Nicaragua is so easy. They're so easygoing. It's such a small place. I must not have to do these processes that every country on earth requires of you. No, no. Even though Nicaragua is pretty easygoing, generally you've got to do the same things as everywhere else. Don't think of it as a special case. It's not a state. It's a sovereign nation, and you're coming over a major border, and anything you're bringing in is an actual permanent import. If you're going to do that to Germany, they would catch you. The difference is there, you'd probably get in trouble, and it would be unbelievably expensive. You may be in actual trouble for it. It may cause problems with your life. Here, yeah, it's just an annoying expensive process to get it out of the aduana. So when you're talking about things like bringing in a blender, some little personal items, think carefully. Is it really worth this kind of risk? Are you really that interested, that invested in skipping a shipping box? Do you hate shipping things so much? It's basically like going to UPS, FedEx, putting things in a box and shipping it to yourself. Is that process so awful, and it could be, that you're willing to do this, this huge risk and potentially really expensive process to, to avoid that? Gauge that, right? And the one time that I say you really do need to think about this is if you have something that's super nostalgic, you have some item that's irreplaceable, then yeah, maybe it's worth bringing it with you. What if you had something that was so valuable to you, not, not like a bar of gold, like a stuffed animal that was, uh, of course, they would never flag that. But you know what I mean? You have something that means a lot to you and you're scared of ever letting it out of your sight and you just want to bring it in. Well, maybe that's when it's going to make sense to take that risk. But if it's a blender, some industrial equipment, uh, air filter, whatever, no. So just normal everyday things. Treat it in a normal everyday way. Don't become a personal importer for no particular reason. You will just trust me, you'll appreciate this advice once you ever have this go wrong. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Questions, comments, right down there. I do my best to, re to respond to everyone. That's why we're responding here with the video. And that's how I get a lot of my subjects. So I really appreciate when you guys ask good questions like this because it gives me stuff to talk about and different angles to fill you guys in on. Uh, so that's that's fantastic. If you'd like to support the channel, the work that we do here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. makes a huge difference uh, in, in being able to do all this. This really is uh, time-consuming and tough. And uh, with that, I will see all of you tomorrow.